Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mows and Mower Man. Hope you're doing well. In this video we're going to, going to be making a start on some of this job lot. Now I have got some old atcos to do. I might keep them for the winter months when uh, sales are really, really low. So I'm just going through these to see which will be the first to sell possibly this year just to bring a bit more money in. Uh, the Kawasaki, I'm waiting on spare parts for that already, just uh, air filters and what have you. Um, but the uh, Hater 41 Auto Drive will probably be the one I'll start off with first. Uh, that would be likely to be the first one that will sell, especially in my area. So we're getting on to that video today. From what I remember in the um, in the job lot video, um, from what I remember, it ran, but it didn't like to run off a choke. So I want a car be clean. Um, battery wants charging, but I think that's pretty much it. I think someone got rid of it because uh, it wasn't running right, I think. But we shall see. I've got to put the battery on charge, and then uh, we'll get on it and uh, get the machine running and what have you. Hopefully it'll turn around pretty nice and uh, should go out on the open market for someone to mow their lawn uh, for this season and next season coming, so that'd be good. If this is your first time you're watching Mixed Mowers, hit the old subscribe button, whack your bell, set notifications to all, that way you'll be told one done a video or two on my Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty, and let's get this Hater 41 Auto Drive to run a bit more smoothly. Right, so let's get the old Hater 41 in then. I've got it sort of out, I'll take the grass box off. Take that off, and in she comes. Super job. No, they're not too heavy, so I shan't put, that, put my lift down. They're not too bad. Oh, my new head. Uh, right, Hater 41 on the bench. Let me get you a bit closer, and then we'll have a look and see what's going on. As I say, from what I remember, um, it was running, but it didn't like um, running off of choke, so carburetor fuel issue. Um, we get a quick little blow off as well, get nice and clean, resituate you, and then we'll get on with it. Okay, Hater 41 now up on the bench. It's had a little bit of a blow off um, and the battery is on charge. We've got Mr. Snail down in here as well. He needs to be evicted. Out you go. Um, so yeah, battery's come off and I have literally just uh, put that on charge. So hopefully that'll have enough charge in it just to start it on the battery a bit later on. Um, so this machine, it was it was running, but it wasn't running correctly, and I think that's the reason why somebody's thrown it out. The filter doesn't look too bad. It's, it's had a bit of use, uh, but I should be putting a new one on anyway. Uh, I want a nut driver or 10 mil. Let's go 10 mil, shall we? Let's put a 10 mil on. Uh, 10 mil on a short reach, on a, on a short socket would be enough. Oh, hello, eight mil. So all we're going to do to begin with is literally just going to be expose the carby. Expose the carburetor up. This is a, a non-priming um, carburetor, which is a, the better ones out of a two. This is a manual choking carb, <coughs> which I prefer <coughs> on, these, uh, on these Hater Quantum engines because uh, you don't have that, that priming issue. Uh, we've got a... We've got a very, very small throttle cable there as well to remove, which we'll be looking at a bit later on to make sure it's fully adjusted uh, and, and the machine is choking. <clears throat> so remove that and that. And you get a magnet train in a minute as well, just so I, can, so I can secure all these bits and bobs. We've got a bolt here to remove and here and here. So there's three there total to do. In fact, you know what? I don't know why I'm mucking about here, Mick. Um, let's um, let's do this the, the proper way. <clears throat> let's get rid of that. I've got an impact here, and I'm not even using it. There you go. A bit quicker. Okay. Let's speed it up. Otherwise, the video is going to be 45 hours long. So three of those to remove. Let me get a magnet tray in, or Chinese pot would be all right. Let's get a Chinese pot, that'll be fine. That'll all be good. 
Uh, we can now remove this, um, this carburetor. There's a gasket behind it and an air breather pipe to come off as well. That's all good. Um, we can literally just simulate the choke to see if it is actually choking, and it is, so that's good. So there's a little tiny spring up on here. Let me just show you the configuration of, of this um, spring uh, assembly, just so you got it for future reference, okay? Uh, this is your choke one, and there's a little tiny black spring just here, and that's got to go onto, onto here as well, okay? And it sits on, uh, I believe the second hole, yep, yeah, the second hole just down here. You see that the second hole, it sits on there. Um, and then there, there's your throttle, um, throttle spring as well, your governing spring there, and there's your governor arm as well, okay? So it actually looks like quite a new carburetor on there. That doesn't look very old at all. So that's good. Let's, um, let's go for that. Do you want a three eighths on there or a 10 mil? And I tend to find a 10 mil with a, a long reach tends to fit better. That's an eight mil, Mick. because we were mucking about eight mils a minute ago, weren't we? Or oh, 10 mil. These longer, these longer stem ones tend to reach better than, the, than anything else. Sink it down the side. That's that one. And there's one down here and all. That's it, gaskets come off as well, which is lovely. We'll just drop that off a touch. Collect the nuts and bolts, bits and bobs. Good, good. I'm gonna get my pair of um, very small plastic hose clamps, and we're gonna clamp that um, quantum line off about there, because there's a little bit of fuel in here where I ran it up the other day. I want a pair of yellow handled pliers to remove the fuel clip off the machine, and then swap them over for a pair of uh, needle nose, and give that fuel line a twist first, just to break the seal and then rock it back off of um, the machine. And then your carby, you've got your little, little, your little black springs come off your choke, that just sits up there. And then all you do with a carburetor is just, just hold your governor arm, tilt it towards the front and off it comes like so. And there's your carby. This has gone onto the bench and I'm not expecting it to be excessively dirty. Um, we'll probably get away with just a manual clean for now. Um, hopefully that'll do it. And if it does, uh, we'll be quids in. It's got to have a new air filter put in, a new spark plug that's been recent as well. That's not, a, not an old spark plug in there. Um, and possibly a new pull cord, we should see. But I don't think we'll do a lot to this machine to get it up and running looking nice. Let's get a carburetor done first. Um, quick little half inch on the bottom of here just to, just to remove that. We'll get on the bench, have a little look at it and we'll go from there. Right, so I have um, just done a few adjustments on my bench um, to enable me to use my my, my, my new tripod I've got. Um, I've adjusted it so I can actually put, now put my um, selfie stick off my tripod onto uh, a hole in the bottom of the bench here, which enables me to do close-ups uh, on the bench. So you should be um, now doing much better um, up here rather than how I was doing it over my shoulder before. So put another light on, give you a bit more Illuminate. Um, half inch, straight on here. Tip the carburetor onto its side, because I want to see, I want to see what sort of um, mess we've got in this carburetor. I don't think it's gonna be too bad. I think it's gonna be just a little bit of dirt in there, is what I think it's gonna be. Yeah, that's a bit gunked up. I've got a little tiny, little tiny carburetor hammer. There it is. Just for such purposes. on there. My word. Someone glue it on. There it goes. That's right on there, that is. Cool. Okay, so there's the float. Bit, lots of gunk on there. And if I pull this out just here, there's the petrol. And then, there's all the gunk inside the carby. Okay, see all that? 
that's a reason why it wasn't running. All that gunk just there is a reason, okay? So, at least we understand the reason why it was uh, not doing its job. Um, I've got a little tiny pin to remove off of uh, for the float. Bump. Up comes a float and needle. And then over this side, we'll have a little tiny mixture jet just here. Uh, it's around about quarter past, okay? So I'm just gonna do that up. So that's one half turn. That's a full turn. That's one and a half. That's one and three quarter turns, Was that was. So remember, one and three quarters. That one's got to come out. And that's all there is on this carburetor. There's nothing else to these little tiny uh, quantum carbies. So you can now get your get your spray. Let me find a better a better spray. One that's got uh, a bit more in it. <clears throat> I'm running a bit low on the old uh, WD40 and GT85. I'm getting through it quite quick. I'll have to put some more on my old Amazonian wish list, won't I? Um, so you've got a couple of holes just in this carby. Anywhere where, where there's a hole, give it it. Come on. That's better. That's coming out of there, see? One in there. That's coming out of the top of top of the uh, tube. That one there. Turn it round into there. Down through there, through the seat. I can see it there. Through the tubes, through the emulsion. Both of those. One just in there. And you've got two holes, one here. Let's come out the front of a jet. And that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do. We know that carburetor is now running, okay? The actual float itself has just got loads of crud on there. Which just wants taking off. So you can spend a bit of time just cleaning that float up, okay? And I'll come back to that in a bit. To make sure that's nice and clean. Your needle will be fine. It's a quick little wipe off. And then just takes it onto the main jet itself, which is a reason why this carb wasn't actually running. Now, if we turn this on the side, you should, should see um, liquid come out of both sides. This side is restricted. So what I've got here is a little tiny um, thumbnail, a uh, thumb drill. You get packs of them on uh, on eBay and Amazon. And all I do with mine, I can't tell you what size this is. I can't. My, my papers can't even see can't see writing on there at all. But what I do with mine is I just drill these out ever so slightly. Now you have to be a bit careful because they do snap. So you have to sort of drill it ever so gently. In it goes. That's gone in. And then just back out again. And then back in again, and eventually it just bites. There it goes, she's gone in now. And that's all you need to do, okay? And all that's doing, do you know what? It's not even um, taking any material off. It's just cleaning those walls back up again. It's a perfect size. And now when you spray, see it's coming out of both, which is exactly what you want. So I, do, I use little micro drill bits just to get around that little tiny issue. If you don't, then you're gonna have problems. That's running lush. I get a set of files, and I use my biggest one I've got. I think it's the biggest one, or next one down. And I just literally just run a file through the side wall of that there as well. Just to clean that up, all the way around. Another clean. Good. We like that. 
Get a bit of blue roll. So that's the main jet now cleaned. We're happy with that. The pin doesn't need cleaning, apart from what's just laying in the bottom of the carb tray. Uh, mixture screw, which is one and a quarter. Just give that a bit of a clean, just to get rid of some of that debris stuff that's on. Because when you put, when you screw that back in, you don't want to be uh, introducing any debris. Good. Uh, the bowl itself just looks a bit gammy. Now, what I use is uh, just wire wool, small piece of wire wool. Put your finger over the hole at the bottom, spray in some, some stuff. You can use carburetor clean ice if you want to. Tip it on its side, and then just with a bit of wire wool, just start to rub the wire wool all the way around. And get rid of all this green gunk. It's quite bad in this one. And all of that is your ethanol. Your ethanol and all that old caper, that's what that is. Let's get a bit of carburetor cleaner. I don't use a lot because of the rubber components, but we're just using it just on a bowl. <coughs> You're a bit more of a winner. Now you all saw it beforehand, it was like a greeny color. And just with a little tiny bit of wire wooling, you can get rid of all that bio muck that they put in the fuel these days. Now someone texted me the other day, on, I think it's on my Instagram, about a mower. They, they've had a carburetor ultrasonic cleaned and this, that, and the other, and still mucking about. You know, I've said I'll just clean, clean the carburetor because I've had it done. I said, well, I've cleaned carburetors three or four times before they, they, they even respond. You know, so if you find you still got a hunting issue, I would definitely recommend cleaning the carby again. Okay, I think we're there. We are. And there is the, the bowl now looking nice and clean, which is what we want. I'll just give that two minutes just for that carburetor clean just to evaporate off, because I don't want to put that straight back on the bowl, because it'll, it'll make, the, make the bowl expand. Quick little clean up here. Get rid of all this muck. Out of my tray. So the last thing to do is just for float, which I'll do quickly off camera, because you don't want to see me just muck a spending five minutes just cleaning that up. You can use a bit of carburetor spray just to help help with that as well. That, that will definitely get it all off a lot quicker, if that's doing it now. A bit of carby spray and a little tiny nylon brush I find helps. Um, or toothbrush, that's just as good. An old toothbrush. Just to get all that muck off, all that ethanol and gunk. There you go. And that's your float all nice and clean now. So that's good. Let's give that a quick little wipe off. Super job. One final wipe down, because you don't want to be introducing any dirt when you're reassembling your carburetor. Okay, so clean your, clean your, your tray off. <coughs> First one to put in will be your little tiny adjuster fuel mixing screw, which went in there. And we wanted one and a quarter turns, didn't we? Oh, one and three quarter, wasn't it? One and three quarter. All the way in, just till it's well seated. So it's going to be about there. So there's your quarter, there's your half, there's your other half, there's your one. Okay, and that's where it was set before. We may have to come back and redo it yet, we're not quite sure yet, but we shall see how we get on. 
There's a little tiny bit of gunk on top of this carb here too, so I'm gonna put a bit of wire wool and just give that a bit of a clean. Let's get that off. Bit of GT85. Just get rid of any iron filings we may have had on there. That's good. Another little rag. Right, um, we've got the needle to put in. We've got the little tiny um, pin and the main jet to do. We've got the float to do. So grab hold of your float, put your pin in. Hang on, uh, float in. That's it. Float goes in the hole. Bosh, bash, bosh. Get your pin. Put that through. Blow test. That works lush. Get your bolt, stick that on top, tip it up, and get your half inch, and don't do it up an impact, do it up the socket by hand, because you don't want it up too tight. Carburetor cleaned and done. Just got to nip it up with a, with a half inch. Back over to the mower. Okay, back onto the mower. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna do um, how to enter my giveaway for my 10,000 subscriber. Now, the reason I'm doing it this way is because this way it stops people entering a competition who are just literally entering a competition for the sake of it, okay, just, just to win the prizes. Now, I want, I want my prizes to go to people who watch my videos and who have supported me throughout, okay? Um, and continue to support me. I don't, I don't want my prizes to go to someone who, uh, who wants to get some, get some nice new tools and um, uh, sell them on. That's what I don't want to do. Um, so to enter my 10,000 subscriber giveaway, there are a few little tiny rules, um, but uh, that's just the way it is, hey ho. To enter my um, 10,000 subscriber giveaway, all I want you to do very, very simply, is to email me, and you've all got my address, email address, or you can find it on my about section or on my banner, one or the other, okay? Um, all you've got to do is email me, what lawnmower is this? I know it's a hater, but what type of lawnmower is this? Is all you've got to do. Email me the answer in the subject of the actual email itself, and um, once you've done that, um, you're then entered into a 10,000 subscriber giveaway. Okay, so what type of uh, lawnmower is this make model? And um, once you've done that, the only other uh, provisory I have is to win your, your one of the prizes, there's gonna be three prizes in this uh, giveaway. To win one of the prizes is you must be in the live stream when I do my giveaway. If you are not in the live stream when I do my giveaway, th the prize will be rolled over until the next person. Yes, I know it means you've got to sit in the live stream for two hours, people. But predominantly, the people who sit in my live stream for two hours are the ones who actually um, support me all the time, okay? So to win a prize, email me. Uh, what make and model is this lawnmower, number one? And you must be in my live stream when I do it, and I should, I, you, you'll see it, it'll come up 10,000 subscriber giveaway. You'll see it, okay? Um, and if you're not in the live stream, if I call your name out, then you don't win the prize. You must be in the live stream, okay? That's the only other provisory I have. So good luck to everybody, and uh, if you enter, you stand a chance of winning one of three Milwaukee prizes. On with the mower, um, I've just tipped the carburetor on, and now what I'm gonna do is literally just run that 10 mil in. And I'll get the other one and run that in. Like so. Now don't forget, at this point, you want to put your little tiny choke spring on the one I showed you earlier on, the little tiny black one. Just hook that over the choke arm. There's a little tiny slot for it to go on. Once that's in place, you can then just double check it's choking, which it is. Lovely. So car be on. I now want to drain that fuel out. I've got a few nuts and bolts here. Just want to see what sort of condition my tank's in. There's not a lot of fuel in there, but you just never know if there's any water in there. There's a little bit of gunk in there, you can see that. A little tiny bit of gunk in there. Not a lot. Yeah, that's okay. So there's a very small amount in here anyway. There's no water in there, which is good. 
so we're happy with that. It doesn't seem to be how much how much is in there. Not a very good flow, Joe. Oh, the tank's nearly empty. That'll be white. Good. Okay. <coughs> we'll get rid of that. Put that out of the way somewhere safe-ish. Um, so now that's done, we can now bring in the air box cover, which is this one, and the little tiny gasket to fit. Now that's a homemade gasket on there, but uh, it looks pretty good, so we we'll keep it. <coughs> and then I'll change over to my eight mil, don't I? Put my eight mil back on the old uh, impact, because now we've got to run in those little tiny eight mils we had. And also, whilst we're doing that, we want to hook up the fuel line as well. It'd be a good idea, Mick. Do that now. Hook that up. I want to grab me a pair of yellow handled pliers. Now, this video may come out before uh, the job lot video. We'll see how we get on. It all depends on the subscribers for the 10,000 because <coughs> um, I've, I've climbed significantly in the last week and a half over 700 subscribers in about a week and a half I've had. So I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that, but one of my videos has done, has done fairly well of late. And I think that's where, that's where they're coming from. So we're only about a hundred subscribers off of 10,000 at the time of recording this video. So super happy. So you know what the rules are? I don't want no more whinging because they didn't know. If you watch the video, you stand a chance. If you're in the live stream, you stand an even better chance. But that be what it is. Now, I may just advertise it to say, if you want to win anything, it's on this video. But generally, I have about a thousand people enter, a thousand people watch a video in 24 hours, give or take. So there's a good chance you could win. And there's free prizes. Right, so that's all on. Um, I now want to, before I go any further, what I want to do is just take this machine outside in a bit and run it. But what I would like to do is take the pull cord off, uh, give that a bit of a spray jet black on oh, this little bit here as well. It's got to be sprayed black as well. Just all the little bits and pieces, that stick can come off. I don't know that sticker on there. Um, just just for, for appearance wise, get a bit of a spray up and then um, we'll come back and uh, see if it's in running after that. If it is, I'll then bring it back into the shed and uh, it'll have, it'll have the, what we call the, the mixed mowers treatment, okay? Um, but I need to bring this back in to, so, just so it looks apart. If it, if it looks apart, people will buy it. If, it. if it looks like an absolute bag of poop, then people won't, you know? It's got to look, it's got to look right. So just gonna run that choke lever in to about there. And then we got this one here to do up the top. There, now I'm just gonna, now that, 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 that choke cable's set and where it was, just gonna run the choke cable, I'll make sure the flap closes which it does, which is lovely. Um, I'll put a new air filter in as well, because that will definitely help. Put some fuel in, meet you outside in two ticks, and then we'll go from there. Hopefully it'll run and do exactly what it should do. This is a Hater 41 auto drive, so it should do um, someone a nice turn. In fact, I'm gonna use that, reuse that air filter just for now. Uh, it, no, do you know what? Let's just put a new one in. But if I don't, someone will be like, you got a new air filter, mate. You didn't put your own gunk one in there. And have a whinge at me. That's what people do. Have a whinge and a pop at me. Let me grab a new air filter, so I've got a couple left. Need a few more, really. I might put one on my old Amazon wish list. I have got Amazon wish list, you know, in case you didn't know. New air filter, going in. I was like, I bet you don't put your air filter in there. All right, I'll do it. Um, let's put that in. All right, so new air filter gone in. Let me just check your oil as well before we go any further. Bit of rag, bit of blue roll, that'll do. Just want to check the oil level, see how we're doing. Uh, next to no oil, it says add. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to add a bit of a bit of oil. Don't go too mad because uh, it, it may just want sort of 150 mil. So I'm going to put about 150 mil, 200 mil in. Just for now, it might just be right, right, at, the, right at the, uh, the, the upper limit or the low limit, if that makes any sense. Right, give that a wiggle wiggle. Let that run down. Quick little dip test. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I think we're about there, give or take. I just want to let it settle. I'll meet you outside in two ticks. And then uh, we'll go for a run up. Hopefully it will now start off on its own back. I don't think the battery is going to have enough charge in it to, to start it. We shall see. If not, I'll add it to the end of the video a bit later on. But uh, it was turning over, but the battery's only been on charge for about 25 minutes. So chances are it won't, it won't go on for, for, for a good four hours to give it any, any pizzazz. But it, it should start off its own back just for the pull cord. And I uh, want to check the drive and what have it. As long as that all works, uh, we are quids in um, for what this mower cost me. As I said, if this one sell, sells, that will pay for the entire job lot of machines that I picked up just the other day. Right, Hater 41 auto drive. I want to be testing the height control as well because these drives do, do differentiate when you have it on a top setting and on the lowest setting as well. Okay, so I'm going to put it on, on roughly the lowest setting to begin with. Fuel, got no fuel in it. It won't go without that, Mick. And you get some more fuel too. We're nearly ooped. Let's put a bit in there. So now it's had a carburetor clean. And I'm hoping that's all this machine ever wanted was a quick carby clean, just to get it to run right. And I think that's the reason somebody threw it out. Somebody threw it out just because it was hunting and surging. The only reason, can you believe that? Let's put this fuel in the shade, just for now. <clears throat> so uh, all in, spark plus good, new air filter. On to choke. <clears throat> I'm looking for the machine not to hunt and surge and, uh, and do what it should do, all, all, its, all its features. So, flat out revs. It's a bit smoky, not been run for a little while. Um, flat out revs is fine. No hunting, no surging. Does it idle? Idles absolutely beautifully as it should do. Pick up. Drive. So it drives on the lowest setting. It was a bit of a belt adjustment. So it is a bit smoky, but this machine, all over Mrs. P's new washing, um, hasn't been run. It's been tipped up by me as well when I, when I transported it. So it does want a good run. I'll put it over the side there and then I'll give it a run for five, 10 minutes. See if the smoke clears. Hopefully it does. And if it does, this machine will then go on to have a complete full service and a bit of a clean up. And uh, hopefully it should sell this year. So give us five minutes, two seconds for you guys, and we'll see if it stops smoking. Right, there you go. Uh, it's a little bit missy, um, got a little bit of a miss to it, but that's because the, uh, the drive belt is a bit too tight. That's the reason why. Um, the drive belt is causing a bit of friction on the pulley in the higher position. So it, it does want the drive just adjusting ever so slightly. Uh, but apart from that, had a bit of a clean off. Looks tidy, no smoke. So yeah, it'll go forward and have a uh, have a full clean. Super happy with it. So yeah, super cool. So there you have it, Hater 41 Auto Drive, now all up and running exactly as it should do and uh, no hunting. There is a very small miss, as I say, because when you put the height adjustment up at the highest, that belt is dragging on the pulley and uh, all it wants is just wants slacking off ever so slightly. As long as you can um, pull the mower backwards in the highest position, that's roughly where you want it. Um, if you do it too tight, then when you go in the high position, they drive on their own and then they're no good for that. But just make sure that when you slack it off at the highest position, once it's all done and it's exactly right, you then test it on the lower position to make sure that it does drive on the lower position, but the lower position won't be a strong drive as it is on the top, if that makes sense. It's just because of how high you're stretching the belt, that's all it is. <clears throat> so super, super happy. Uh, that machine uh, will now go forward, have one of the old mixed mowers, special treatment. It'll be all sprayed up, looking nice, plenty of lacquer on there, make it shine, make it pop. And uh, that machine can then go on and be sold. So hopefully it will sell for good money and it will pay for the entire job lot that you've seen in the previous two videos. So super, super cool with that. If this is the first time you're watching mixed mowers, don't forget to hit the old subscribe button, whack the old bell, set notifications to all, and that way you'll be told one's on a video or two on my Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6.30pm UK time. 
I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mars very, very soon. But until then, people, don't forget, much more importantly, take care easy. <laughs>